Good morning and welcome once again to our video streaming service. As lockdown restrictions are eased, we've seen a surge in COVID infections. Many of our members are now directly affected as family members test positive. And just this week, one of our members lost her husband after he was infected whilst he was in hospital. And so our thoughts and our prayers are with all those affected. And we're reminded of the need to stay safe and to protect ourselves and one another. In the midst of the darkness, we are assured that the darkness cannot overwhelm the light. And so we light this candle as we pray for darkness to be dispelled and as we commit ourselves to being a light in the darkness. And so let's pray. Gracious and loving God, in a world shaped by conflict, where we seem to be slipping back into tribal divisions, you call us to welcome those with whom we have absolutely nothing in common. In a culture full of inequalities which only seem to be widening, you call us to treat each person as our sister and brother. In a time of intensifying injustices which are found in every community, if not in every neighbourhood, you call us to yoke ourselves to your radical hope. In a lifestyle which idolises the individual to the exclusion of all others, you call us to notice the parent who works three jobs, the dementia-diminished senior, the refugee family on the corner. May we offer not just cups of cold water, but all that we are and all that we have to those who are in our midst, even as we pray to you, God in community, holy in one, and we say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Today I've chosen to read Psalm 13, and so we focus on Psalm 13 as our text for the day. How much longer will you forget me, Lord? Forever? How much longer will you hide yourself from me? How long must I endure trouble? How long will sorrow fill my heart? Day and night. How long will my enemies triumph over me? Look at me, O Lord my God, and answer me. Restore my strength. Don't let me die. Don't let my enemies say we have defeated him. Don't let them gloat over my downfall. I rely on your constant love. I will be glad because you will rescue me. I will sing to you, O Lord, because you have been good to me. Thanks be to God. For this word to us. This is one of, of many psalms of lament. In fact, I read that there are more psalms of lament than any other psalms. There's a rich tradition of lament in ancient culture, a tradition that's not so common in our culture anymore. In fact, it seems almost foreign to our ears to hear this kind of lament, especially when that lament is aimed at God. How long, how long, how long? Repeated over 
and over again. The psalmist even instructs God, look at me, answer me. Bruce Birch in the Upper Room's Disciplines writes the following. Our initial response might be to suggest that such language is disrespectful of God. But in the Hebrew and its descendant Jewish tradition, lament is an important expression of regard for a God who can receive and encompass even our most distressing experiences and reactions. The psalmist addresses a God willing to take on our distress, our impatience, and even our anger. I was particularly drawn to this psalm this week, and to the concept of lament, as once again we've been confronted with the scourge of gender-based violence and femicide. Like the psalmist, I find myself crying out, how long, how long, how long? How long must we continue to witness the level of violence against women in particular and against children? I haven't been able to get last week's text out of my mind. The text in which we find Abraham disposing of Hannah and her child Ishmael as they are now no longer needed, no longer required. Sarah doesn't want Ishmael to be a part of Abraham's inheritance, even though it was her idea to use their servant Hannah to provide Abraham with an heir. That kind of treatment of a woman disturbs me deeply. I haven't been able to get it out of my mind since preaching on that text last week especially with all that's going on around us. The saddest part for me is that women are still treated as objects to serve a purpose in so much of our world today. Surely one human being could never treat another human being in that way, to simply dispose of them as if they're objects. And yet we witness this Far too often. How long? How long? How long? Sometimes it's subtle, but sometimes it's so loud that we cannot ignore it. And we cannot ignore what is going on around us. Today, our presiding bishop will be launching a campaign in the Methodist Church of Southern Africa against gender-based violence. We're reminded that we must not only lament, but we must do all that we can to remove patriarchy and toxic masculinity from our society. We must restore the dignity and worth of women as equally made in the image of God. And so for the next seven weeks in the Methodist Church of Southern Africa, we will be focusing on gender justice, prevention, and the combating of gender-based violence. As we reflect on lament, and in particular on this psalm, we need to note that Psalm 13 is not a hopeless lament. It ends with the words, I rely on your constant love. I will be glad because you will rescue me. I will sing to you, O Lord, because you have been good to me. I read this week that all of the Psalms of Lament end with a note of hope and trust that God hears and God responds except for Psalm 88, apparently. The Psalms move from lament to praise because God hears and God responds. Bruce Birch, again in the Disciplines, writes the following. 
prayer at every moment in our lives is grounded in trust that we can lay before God all of our experience. In every moment that we dare to praise God, God's grace will open new possibilities for our lives. In every moment that we dare to praise God, God's grace will open new possibilities for our lives. God hears and God responds. And part of God's response is to call us to action. And so may we hear and respond with God to the cries of injustice and exploitation, to the cries of pain and suffering all around us. Let's pray. Most loving God, you have put it on our hearts to pray for one another. Please hear our prayers, correct their errors, and bless all that is wise and loving. We pray for the young and the strong, and all who are full of joy and high hopes today. And we pray for the elderly and the weak, and all who are utterly weary and disheartened today. We pray for the wise and the generous and those who are looking for new challenges today. And we pray for the foolish and the selfish and those who are evading their responsibilities today. We pray for peacekeepers and peacemakers and all who work for justice and peace today. And we pray for the hostile and the treacherous and all who will resort to violence today. We pray for the well-housed and well-fed and those who share their good fortune today. And we pray for the homeless and the hungry and all whose plight is ignored today. We pray for the patient and the merciful and all who will make new friends today. And we pray for the hasty and the judgmental and all who will create some misery today. We pray for the healthy and the buoyant and those who will share much happiness today. And we pray for the dying and the sad and those who will weep inconsolably today. We pray for the faithful and the loving and all who will worship with delight today. And we pray for the faithless and the cynical and all who will find life a drag today. We pray for our loved ones and our friends and, and those whom we will meet casually today. And we pray for strangers and enemies and those who will think evil of us today. Loving God, please bring the day nearer when our prayers and our deeds will work in perfect harmony and that we will be a blessing to those whose lives touch ours. We pray all this through Christ our Saviour. Amen. And so we continue to commit ourselves to working for a world in which all people are treated equally as made in the image of God. And we will join again in this way next week and I invite you to share your prayer requests in the comments so that we can join together with you in prayer for specific needs. I'm sure that we will be sending out another letter or another newsletter this week um, with some specific prayer requests. And so keep an eye out on your inbox in your email um, and, and also just say hi in the comments so that even as we're apart, we can know that we are a part of a broader community that continues to support us and pray for us. And be assured of my prayers for you, and please feel free to contact me should you need anything urgently. And now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen.